I'm with Mariam Ibrahim. And Mariam, your story touched a raw nerve around the world because you were a mother, you were a doctor, and also you were pregnant with your second child. You were under the most enormous pressure. Were you not tempted to renounce your Christian faith at all? We both understand that we are at war, you know, and we have to keep fighting. We don't have to give up. We, we need to continue that because the thing that we saw in jail, at the court, and anything around, you know, just people, the people need a voice. You know, there's other inmates in jail or inside the prison or at the court. If I give up and I said, okay, I'm a Muslim, and I have to follow the Islam, and this the first thing have to happen, Daniel have to, if we want to continue our marriage, Daniel have to convert to Islam also, so we have to, and then we will have the boss. We're gonna have hundred lashes. We'll charge with adultery. Hundred lashes, and then, and I have to wait until I give birth for the baby. Then I will have the. I have to stay in jail in the prison. They have to keep me inside the prison until I give birth for the baby, and then they will have the hundred lashes. And then will have the same thing, and then we have to come to the court ask for the Islamic marriage. If we didn't do that. We have to, I have to go in jail, stay in jail, give birth for my daughter, and receive my hundred lashes and sentence to death, all that. After two years, they're gonna take, before Martin, when Martin became two years, if Daniel wanna take him, and I'm sure he will do that, he can take the child, but the judge said he can't give it to him, because they cancel our marriage, this is not right. So uh, the situation, they child have to go to the child service. My is the same thing when she became, she turned two years, she have to do the same thing, they have to take her away, and then he will send us to this. And then he'll already, they drop his charge because he charges adultery. Cause they said he's a, a Christian, and they're still considering me a Muslim. I know I, I'm a Christian and I have a strong faith. I said, okay, if I die, it's better for what I saw about the Islam. And Islam. I can't accept my, for me to change all my life, my family. The, my kids, what are they going to say if they grow up? I know I did something like that for them. Because in Islam, they don't have a chance. If your mom and dad is a Muslim, you have to grow up as a Muslim. You know? I said this about my children. I said, it's better. If I die, I will make sure my kids, they have a better future with their father. It's better to grow up in a situation like that, with Islamic law and all that stuff. My daughter will have the same issues if she grow up and she have a part of her family that are Christian. Even in my husband, Daniel's family, we have some people are Christian and Muslim. We are living in peace. We don't have something like that. But the problem in the system, in the law, we have. You grew up with an Orthodox Ethiopian mother and a Muslim father, and so that technically, under Sudanese Sharia law, made you a Muslim, but you argued that your mother had brought you up and you were a Christian. Was that really uh, difficult, that you had such an unusual case? I was born in refugee camp. My mom was the one who, who settled in the refugees, and my father is working as a driver for the like truck or a U-Haul to bring the people who live at the refugees camp to the city, so some people working at the market and all this stuff. And my mother, one of those people, who used to live at the refugees. And my mom is very beautiful, and my <laughs> father fell in love, and they got married. And they don't have problem, because she's a, she's a woman, and she can, but Muslim man cannot, Muslim uh, woman, woman cannot marry the Christian. So they don't have problem with their marriage when they got married. But still he's trying to push her to accept Islam and this is one of the the one of the problems that they have faced in their life. And it end up uh, with the divorce, you know. And how old were you when yeah, they divorced? And six years. And then we moved to the big city in Godaris, yeah. So you qualified as a doctor? Mm, yes. But I didn't practice, uh, and then I got married. I wanna, I wanna have a family for myself. After my mom passed away, and at the church, even one of my priests used to tell me that Mariam, you, you are, 
he's supporting me, I want to be a nun. You know? <laughs> yeah, but when I met Daniel... Was it love at first sight? I met Daniel, uh, I'm friend with his sister. I'm very active as a kid, as a kid. And I met his sister um, like seven years before I was married. Daniel used to stay in Sukum just for the holiday or something like that to visit the family. But he used to talk with him with the sky, through the sky, with the phone. Mm, yeah. And then you met him? And then he, well, we talk about that uh, before even he went to Sudan. <laughs> so, okay. And the reason why he went to Sudan. 2011. Did you think that marrying Daniel would give you all these problems later? Well, it never came to my mind something like that is going to happen or anything like that. Even when I went to, I remember when I went to uh, have a birth certificate for Martin, they, they did ask me, but they, they didn't stop by that or do anything. The case started with adultery for both of us, me and Daniel. Yeah. And we spent uh, one day in jail, we get a... Yeah. Martin at that time is only seven months. Yeah, he's crawling. Yeah. We are shocking. We don't know what's going on around. We don't understand. Okay, we can do that. Everything, we can do that because we know ourselves. We don't have anything to worry about. We didn't do anything wrong. Okay, we, we, we can go through that. We can do that. And the system just... The system, the law. In the end, I have to go to the to prison on that on Christmas Eve. And and you spent three days in jail at Christmas 2013 on the charge of adultery. Still. Adultery, and they have to. The reason that the other side that uh, they claim they're my family, they request to the court they have to take me to the doctor. They say they have uh, mental <laughs> issues. <laughs> and the judge said, if the, if the doctor said, yes, she has something like that, I'm going to drop off the child and she can, go, she can go to the hospital and stuff like that. And I went to the hospital and all that. And I have nothing and I'm in good health, taking care of my husband, my son. I have a very happy life before I went to the prison or all this start. I started big, running my business, so volunteering my chair. I have anything like that, you know. Even if this one has happened, I just, just I have to keep quiet because of my son. Because Daniel, if he saw me, uh, I'm breaking down or I'm crying or doing something, I have to stay strong. So you can make sure when we are inside the prison, he have, didn't have to be worried about me or Martin or something. I know he, he did that. He worried even sometimes. <laughs> I felt like I want to tell him, we're OK, everything is going to be OK. But I'm just so blessed to have him around in my side at that time. So when at that time, it came <coughs> Uh, New Year's uh, holiday and all this stuff, you know, and they transferred me to the woman prison. Uh, I have to come to the hospital from the woman prison. I spent the the three one week on the woman, the small jail. I, yeah, sleeping on the floor. And all this <laughs> yeah, and, and no visit. Even the the bottle, bottle, no bottle of water. You have to drink from there. Uh, I have to pay for the, some of the guards so they can get out to get me mail for Martin. With my, uh, just at the, every time I, with, I say with the prayer for the people's prayer, you know, but it's very hard, I can tell you. you know, it's very hard. Even sometimes, you know, I felt. Like I want to make sure what's inside me, you know. How sometimes when I feel the baby is not moving, you know, I there's something wrong. I have to run, but no way I can see the doctor. I can't have anything. Daniel tried. He tried very hard to get me out before I was sentenced. He, he did. Even I have many copies for his request to the court. I still now I, 
I have keep all this stuff. I'm keeping all that stuff. Asking the the reason they can let me go out to see the doctor. Asking the judge she can let me go and see the doctor. All this then happen. I want to have a family. Even one of my dreams, I want to have uh, 20 kids. <laughs> but now after I gave birth for my, I have some issues with my health. And, yeah. It must have been incredibly hard for you. At that time, I'm, I'm ready to accept any, anything. Even if they, they tell me, Mariam, we are going to have your sentence. I'm just ready at that time. I stopped being shocked or anything about that. You know. I said, OK, I have to come. Yes. So you went to the office, and they, they, you, you are released, Maria. Uh, they didn't tell me you are released. No, sorry. They, they are doing some paper. I did ask one of the guys, Sam. She just stopped me. You are released. I said, oh, OK. And they just kept quiet. And I didn't say goodbye to another inmate. Even I'm, I'm doing laundry for Martin. You know. I left just close in prison. <laughs> yeah, I left them there. I have to get just the stuff quick, 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 and they ask me to bring one of the people that I trust so they can help me with the kids, Kerry Martin, and I'm holding Maya. And they pick up the stuff, and the guard, none, one of the guards went out and called taxi. The taxi came inside the prison, they put all my stuff in front of the office. When the prison, when the, the guards brought me taxi, they took his phone. They took his phone. They say, go, drop her off, and come back, pick up your phone. And, yeah. and there's another police car. They're following us when we're working. Oh, yeah. And it's like from Umdurman to Khartoum to my house. It's like uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. And we stop in the middle. Of the, uh, and that. And I, I think I'm wearing the same dress that all the people saw me on. When we are at the way, some people say, hi, look at the video. And we start, they start worried about that. And, and I'm waiting to go home. I <laughs> was shocked. <laughs> and when I go home, finally, I sleep in my bed, make meals for me, for my son, to take shower. <laughs> and all that doesn't happen. When we are in the halfway, stop me and ask me to go to the safe place because it's not safe for me to go home. Mm. And I say, I don't have any place I can go, only my church. And I went to the church. The church welcomed me and you have to stay there. And I say, okay, I'm going to stay, no problem. Just I have to tell Daniel. And I call, I, pick, I take the phone and ask him. I say, okay, I'm going to call him. But he already have his number. And he, they call him and let him know. Where, where is Miriam? And Daniel, I think he already knew that when they get out of the, uh, the meeting. One of the reporters, someone called them and let them know Mariam was released. And they get what they have to come so quick to see where I am, where is Mariam, <laughs> you know? And they are going to the prison. And I did call them, no, we are Mariam here. My best told them, Mariam, safe, she's at the church. And I and after that, I'm going to stay. I, it didn't come to my mind. I'm going to use embassy. No, I'm not going to use embassy. I'm going to sell the church. <laughs> it's the safe, yeah. And then I say, this is going to be hard for the state to, to provide the, enough protection. I have to go to US embassy. What do you think about what's happening to Christians today in Sudan? This is not something new. This is not today. It was not just, you know. It's happened before, and it's a long time, you know. And we know there's many places have to be for the church. Now it's changed. They're building another building there. You know, they're selling the church land, the school, the Christian school. And just after one year for my release, they, they did another two pastor, if you had the pastor Peterian, you know, all the same cases, and they are arresting the Christian girls, Christian women for making the local wine or the selling it. If you're not covering your head, you know, and this is it's not just for the Christian. This is even the I know the the Muslim people or the, any other religion. If you spoke out against the government, the journalists, if they arrest, the, there's no freedom of speech and all these issues. Sudan. Mm -hmm. 
So what would you say to the international community now? Now you're free, now you're able to speak on behalf of people that you've left behind. What, what, what are you saying? Um, this is a... Uh, this is very, you know, it's very important to have people have to be aware of that, you know. And even if the diplomatic uh, stuff, they have to speak with the government. They have to respect the law there, but these issues, we can hide it, we can cover it up, you know. Like, uh, the, you, can, you can say, I respect, like the Sudanese government, we respect the freedom of religion. They think that, they keep saying that, they... they are they uh, are representing at the UN Council and all this stuff saying we are respect we can we can <laughs> you know you can't say that at the same time yes you are arresting someone because he wrote a, an article against the government or the Christian woman because she's not wearing her scarf or all that stuff. The the Sudanese government says that it doesn't for instance it's banned the building of new churches because it says since the independence of South Sudan, the number of Christians in the north in Sudan itself has decreased, so they don't need new churches. No, nothing. Even there's, a, there's still there's many South Sudanese people living in Sudan. They're, people have to come for school, and there's people from Noba Mountain. The Christian is not just the South Sudanese people. I know, yes. They are strong when the South Sudan is a, and Sudan is the same country. But after the South Sudan being a different country, still there's many Christians, you know. The good thing is, in the, even at the Christian school, like uh, and, um, uh, San Francis school, is, you know, it's a Christian school, and it's close to the church, between the church and between the nun's house. And you can hear the Quran inside the church. Because there's a Muslim student inside. There's to study at the school, but if you are a Christian, you don't have. Uh, you can. You don't have to. You don't. You have to attend the, the. You have to study Islam. If you didn't pass the exam, you can go to another grad. So you think it's discrimination? Yes, against discrimination. Christian. It's all about the system. If you are Muslim, if you are Christian, you have to. We all study. You are a Christian. We all study Islam. Every Christian in Sudan, if you study, if you didn't study in the Christian school, you will have to study Islam and study the Quran. And I'm sure if you didn't find something good in Islam, all the Christians they can become a Muslim. Yeah.